Now let me tell you what was happening 10 years before she got the Nobel Prize. In an interview with the Nobel Prize team soon after winning, Carico said that she was kicked out and forced to retire in 2013 when University of Pennsylvania refused to reinstate her in the formal position. She was reportedly considered not of faculty quality. Hi everyone. So today's video topic is something that I wanted to discuss with all of you since the award of the Nobel Prize in Medicine in the year 2023. There are so many lessons to be learned from today's video, particularly uh, for early career researchers, for scientists, for students of science and even the common audience on how many of the truly innovative and dedicated scientists are treated or what their life looks like before they actually get their due recognition. The subject of today's discussion is Dr. Kathleen Carrico, who was one of the recipients of the Nobel Prize in Medicine in the year 2023 for development of um, mRNA vaccines or for the technology that is required for the development of mRNA vaccines along with Professor Drew Wiesman. An additional thing that you are going to learn from today's video is about the hypocrisy of the system. So now let's talk about Dr. Kathleen Carrico. She is a Hungarian scientist who moved for her postdoctoral research to the US and in the year 1989, she got a faculty position at the University of Pennsylvania. And it was a tenure track position or she was on the verge of getting a tenure. Uh, basically, tenure is getting a permanent position. So it's like a promotion and you get a permanent position. So that's how things work in US. But in 1995, she was demoted. And at the same time, she was detected with cancer as well. The reason for her demotion was because she did not meet certain academic norms, uh, one of which was that she was not getting enough grants as she was working on a very risky project. And that is for what she got the Nobel Prize in the year 2023. Now, if you know about a little bit about vaccines, uh, is particularly viral vaccines, there are three major ways through which viral vaccines are developed. One is that you give an inactivated form of the virus. That is first strategy. The second strategy is that you insert the viral genetic code okay, of the virus. So there are many vaccines developed that way. That is the genetic code of the virus is given and then the genetic code basically leads to the production of the viral proteins. And third is that you use a vector that is a inactivated virus or rather a very a harmless virus and you add this viral genetic code into that harmless virus. So that is called as a vector. So these are the three strategies for viral vaccines. But the problem with this is that they required a very good setup, like a cell culture lab is required and a dedicated setup is required to actually develop these vaccines, which led to their slow development. <clears throat> but in 1980s, other, other researchers uh, had developed a method to make mrna in the lab very easily okay so there was a lot of research that was going on on how you can use mrna for vaccines but still the interest at that time in development of mrna as vaccines was very mild because the mrna that you uh, made in the lab that is basically called as by a process called as in vitro transcription so the mrna that is developed by this method of in vitro transcription uh, that led to inflammatory response. And that is exactly what Dr. Kathleen Carrico was working on. Now, in 1997, Dr. Kathleen Carrico collaborated with Professor Drew Wiesman, who at that time had sufficient funding and grants. The story of how their collaboration started is also very interesting. Uh, the department at that time only had one photocopy machine and both of them used to fight with each other uh, regarding this photocopy like who will get the photocopy first and that's how they started developing interest in each other's research so anyway they started the collaboration in 1997 and finally they found a fix so in the year 2005 they published a study in immunity which was earlier sent to nature but it was rejected by nature they could not really see through the importance of that research or there might be some other reasons uh, the, the crux was that they found that one of the bases in this RNA, in mRNA, so RNA is made of four bases. So one of the bases that is uridine needed to be chemically modified for the, 
body to not recognize it as a foreign substance so the body was recognizing it recognizing it as a foreign substance because it did not have a very important chemical modification of the uridine base so that is what they found and in short they fixed the inflammatory the issue with the inflammatory response but their research uh, did not actually generate a lot of interest which was contrary to what professor drew wisman was thinking he was uh, he in fact shared in one of the interviews that uh, he believed that they would be very famous and they would be getting a lot of calls but nothing like that happened in fact they started a small startup as well but it attracted very little investment finally in the year 2013 uh dr kathleen carico left for a private company called bio entech which later collaborated with pfizer uh, or was a co-manufacturer of the vaccine for covid-19 vaccine along with Fi- uh, pfizer now let me tell you what was happening 10 years before she got the nobel prize in an interview with the nobel prize team soon after winning carico said that she was kicked out and forced to retire in 2013 when university of pennsylvania refused to reinstate her in the formal position she was reportedly considered not of faculty quality her colleagues laughed at her and said that biotech the company where she was going did not even have a website one of her colleagues also corroborated and said that carico was treated as a second class citizen at university of pennsylvania and you know what university of pennsylvania did soon after she got the nobel prize it came out with a tweet you can see even twitter has flagged the tweet by university of pennsylvania by saying that it is misleading and has given the context below anyway what are the important lessons that we can learn from this nobel prize in medicine in the year 2023 and particularly lessons that we can learn from dr kathleen carico well first is that um I would urge or it's my humble request to all researchers and everyone out there that please do not gauge someone by the grants or their metrics research metrics or the awards that they have got because for Dr Dr Kathleen Carico to be awarded the Nobel prize a lot of things conspired right first the development by some other research group of uh, mrna uh, in labs then second was that it was not just inflammation that needed to be overcome there were a lot of other hurdles uh, when it came to mrna vaccine so a lot of other researchers and scientists worked together to actually make mrna vaccines a reality and then finally the covid 19 struck and there was an urgent need or an immediate need for vaccine development where this particular technology came into use and finally both the nobel laureates got their due recognition but there would be so many truly dedicated and innovative scientists like dr kathleen carico who might not get such such sort of a recognition right so it's i salute them who work without due recognition just because of the passion because if dr kathleen carico had not got the nobel prize we would not have known about her story as well so it's it's truly inspirational um and one more lesson for all researchers out there is that you have to be passionate you have to be dedicated because recognition may or may not come second is um i would really like to uh highlight the fact that it takes a lot of courage uh, uh of what professor drew wisman did at that time when he collaborated in 97 because if you see the situation or what it looks to me is that professor dr kathleen carico was demo- demoted and professor drew wisman at that time by the looks of it was quite successful he had grants yet he decided to collaborate on the face value of the research he did not see that okay you know dr kathleen carico is demoted or uh, you know she is not getting good funds he just looked at the research he might have found the idea interesting and col- decided to collaborate with her and that is how it should be everything in research should be seen at the face value so please 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 do not go with these biases of metrics of you know publications in nature and science and you know what what not so try and treat researchers and research at at its face value that is one crucial lesson that we all need to take 
and also you should collaborate as much as possible for science to move forward so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you did please give this a big thumbs up i'll see you in the next video with some new topic very very soon